Well, howdy. This is Michelle from Hesketh Emporium Handmade. Uh, this is second time around, folks. I'm a little annoyed, to say the least. I filmed the entire process for threading, etc. And somebody called and so it switched the video off. I'm annoyed. Anyway, let's get back to it. The machine is now ready for threading up. I have attached the presser foot. Here, it came with a presser foot and a thumb screw or hand screw. Tighten it by hand. If you've got really bad arthritis or problems with your hands, then use a screwdriver, but don't over tighten it. There's really no need. It's just got to hold it really firmly in place. The machine vibrates, of course, and it will over time loosen. So you would need to re-tighten it, but don't make it so tight that you struggle to get it loose. And the same applies for your needle. I've got a needle in here. I'm going to take it out for you though, because I wanted to show you a new needle. How often to change your needle is the big question. Uh, I change mine quite often, every few projects, maybe every two or three projects, depending on how big the projects are. If the project is a big project, I will change it every project I use. Needles, like thread, they are not all equal. I only buy good quality needles. This is something I've learned with age that you pay, in this case, what you for what you get. If you buy cheap needles, you will shred your thread, your machine will knot all the time, the tension will be out horrible, and you will just get absolutely annoyed with your sewing. Don't do that to yourself. Just rather save up a little bit more and get yourself some needles as and when you can afford to buy them. Keep a few handy um, for yourself. So, this is a Schmetz needle. I'm using a universal needle for this because I'm going to be sewing on woven fabric and um, not too worried about the size for now, but just, you know, an in-between um, size is fine. This has a flat back which goes to the back of your sewing machine. So make sure that you don't put the rounded end of your needle to the back. That is goes to the front and the flat part goes to the back of your machine. So you want to put it into the needle holder as high up as it'll go until it stops and then you tighten it hand tight again. It needs to be tight. You do not want this to come undone, but don't use a screwdriver unless you've got problems with your hands. So we've now put the machine onto straight stitch. I've got it on a three at the moment. I'm gonna just turn it down a little bit to about 2.5 and the tension is set to five over here. This is the tension dial over here. And I've got it on straight stitch, which on this machine is zero. So this is your stitch width. That'll make it zigzag if you put it across and straight stitch. If you don't, cotton, thread, call it what you want. Seriously, people, do not buy rubbish thread. The same reason you don't buy rubbish needles. I buy Gutterman. Um, there are other brands out there. Madeira is very good. Silco used to be really good. I don't know if they even make it anymore. Hmm. Anyway, my go-to thread for general use is Gutterman. And Gutterman Mara is excellent as well. So I use that. And um, I am putting a different color at the top to the bottom. And I will show you why a little bit later. So... This machine is threaded by putting it onto the post at the top. You then hook it over this little hook on the front of the machine here. I'm going to turn you around so you can see it. Then comes down behind this little plate here through the two discs on the tension disc and hook back through this plate Turn your hand wheel so this is up. Now on the old machines, you have to thread it through. On the newer machines, you have a little slot, so you just have to actually pull it over. It's now through there, and then I put it through this. It's right over there. I put it through here, and then in front of the needle, where you tighten the needle, there's a little bar, and it goes behind that bar. You are now ready to thread your needle. So, I 
put the presser foot down at this point only. Why do I do that? When you lower your presser foot, the discs in the tension section of your machine here, in this machine it's easy because you can see them, they're on the outside. Those discs squeeze together to hold your thread at a particular tightness. And so when you've put your presser foot down, that is going to tighten your thread and it'll make it next to impossible to pull the thread. So you don't want that to happen while you're threading, but when you get to threading your needle, you should have enough thread ready for you to actually thread the needle so you can drop the presser foot down. Now, cutting my thread, I snip off the thread. Oops, I'm causing havoc over here. I snip off my thread at a 45 degree angle. You can't see it, but microscopically, that 45 degree angle creates a point on your thread, which allows you to very easily thread your machine. The other little trick I teach everybody, lick your finger and put that onto the needle, the eye of the needle. It, it will help you attract the thread. So now I raise my presser foot again. I hold my top thread gently. I turn my hand wheel towards me and as soon as it slackens off I gently pull it and it will pull your bobbin thread up to the top. You now have two threads, one dark green at the top and one white at the bottom and you are now ready to test your machine. So now we'll splice in the other video, which didn't get lost, and you will see the rest of how to sew on this machine. Ciao!